Hi, I'm the Craft Maiden and when I was younger I never really knew what I wanted to be as an adult but one thing was for certain and that was I wanted to create stuff. I tried many different things at different schools and for one year I even tried studying to become a silversmith. At this school I learned how to make different jewelries and techniques but it has been 8 years since then and I still have a lot of tools left and what better way to revisit old times when I still remember the basics than to make a silver pendant at home and show you that you don't need too advanced tools to make it yourself. And as always, if you want to do this yourself, you can find all the tools and materials I use in my videos in the description box down below. And that's it for this long intro, let's get this DIY started! I used a piece of 2mm thick silver metal that I added a piece of tape with the template drawn onto it. Then I drilled a hole in the middle, adding a small amount of oil to the drill tip because metal against metal gets really hot and oil helps reducing the friction and thereby the heat. And since silver is kind of expensive, you save everything you can. With a coping saw and a thin jewelry blade, I then removed the inner triangle. With a awl, I traced the template onto the silver. And with a triangle needle file, I removed all the sharp edges. Then I repeated the same thing on two of the outer edges, keeping one of them still attached to the rest of the metal, so I could still clasp it onto the disc. Since the silver I'm using is a bit uneven, I had to flatten it out with a file as well. With the awl I then drew on new guidelines 1mm from the edges, and with that guideline I then filed at an angle for a nice effect. Then I used emery paper in a variety of grits, starting with the lowest number and working towards the higher ones to buff up the surface. But before buffering the biggest surface I made a cut almost separating the trifrost from the rest of the metal. I did this because the sawdust may cause scratches on the surface and I don't want to cut it all the way through either as it's a pain to hold something so small and buff it at the same time. When the buffing was done, I cut off the triforce and repeated all the steps on the last edge. A piece of damp leather helps holding the pendant in place when you need to work on it without holding it. If I still were in school and showed my teacher all these small lines, I would need to remake it, but since I don't go there anymore, I think this is good enough. After the buffing, I started to polish the metal, and for that I used leather and two kinds of polish to really make the silver shine. And now to adding the ring, I like to file it a bit, just so it will have a bit more surface to adhere to. For the soldering you need a piece of scamolex, or something that withstand heat and distribute it evenly. 
I'm also using the weakest solder I have so I don't have to heat it more than necessary. And to make the solder merge with the silver you need flux. I use a brush to add it on and only where I want the solder to end up. And for this you only need a small amount of solder. When it's heated it may jump off so if you place it do it when the flux is still wet so it will dry into it and stick there when it's heated. Then I used a pencil torch to solder it all together and I stood underneath the kitchen fan to get rid of all the fumes. Depending on how big the silver piece are and how hot the torch gets, you might need to heat the whole thing for the solder to actually melt. And the reason are that the silver is cooling a lot quicker than the torch is heating it up. And since this is an open flame, I highly recommend a fire extinguisher in case of emergency. And if you are a kid wanting to do this, let a parent or a guardian do it for you. And since this gets really hot, do not touch the metal before you have soaked it in cold water. When the pendant is cold enough, you can touch it and see where the flux were, and the rest looks kind of crappy. So to remedy that, I gave it a hot bath on the stove. What I usually do is placing the pendant in a glass jar filled with water and citric acid and bringing it up to a boil. I don't really know how much you need of the citric acid, but I usually start with 2 tablespoons and then add more if nothing changes in the silver surface. And afterwards, the silver should have a milky look, and to get rid of that, we need to give it a final polish. Then I added another ring to the pendant and hung it onto a necklace. And there you have it, the finished pendant made with simple tools in your own home. I haven't spoken much about this, but I do have a Patreon, so if you want to, you can support my channel for only $1 a month. Over there I try to upload a bit more sneak peeks between uploads that will only be exclusive for Patreons. But if you can't support me on Patreon you can always follow me on Instagram and my other social medias. You can find the links to all of them in the description box down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and a bit of random maybe, but if you are still here why not leave a chicken in the comments down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do so and hit that bell button so you will get notified whenever I upload. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!